everyone and welcome back to Mike and his whiteboard. My name is Mike, this is my whiteboard, and today we're going to talk about assignment risk. So when we talk about expiration, which we did yesterday, if you missed that show, check out Find Shows at the top of Scroll down to Mike and his whiteboard and you'll find it there. It'll be the last one there. We're going to talk about another aspect of expiration and that's going to be assignment. So when we get closer to expiration, generally our assignment risk grows, but there's some things to know about assignment in general. So let's get right into it and we'll break it down for you. So when we're talking about assignment or option assignment, we're basically talking about when options are exercised prior to expiration. So one thing to note is that there's a difference between buying an option and selling an option and who has control over assignment. So if I'm long an option, that means that I have control over assignment because I can exercise that option as long as I'm dealing with a US equity option and not an index like we talked about SPX and VIX the other day where we those are European options so we can't exercise those early but if we're looking at a US equity I if I'm long an option I have control and I can early exercise if I need to or want to However, if I'm short an option, the option owner has control. So if I'm short a put or short a call, or if I have a defined risk spread like an iron condor or just a short vertical spread, I have a risk in terms of assignment on that short option, even though I still have that long option that I can exercise, which gives me that defined risk aspect. But it's important to note that when I'm long an option, I have control because I can exercise it. And if I'm short an option, the owner of that option or the person that's long that option has control over assignment. So basically our assignment risk when it comes to options really only comes down to short options because that's when we are not in control. So if we go to the next slide here, we'll break it down a little bit further. And when we're talking about buying power, it's going to be different when it comes to assignment, but it really doesn't change the risk profile of the trade. So this is a really important topic and concept to grasp. So we're going to be talking about selling a naked put. And essentially, when we sell a naked put, our risk profile is 100 shares of stock at our break even price. So let's say I sell a put and I've got a buying power reduction of $300. So let's say a stock is trading at $50 and I sell a naked put at 45 or 40. If I've got a buying power reduction of $300 to sell that option, it's most likely because I'm in a margin account and it gives me additional leverage when I'm selling options. So my risk prof profile is still the same. So I receive a credit when I sell that option. So I've got 100 shares at my strike price but I have that credit offsetting that max loss, so that's why I include the breakeven here. So I've got 100 shares at my breakeven price as my risk profile. Now, let's say that put goes in the money. So let's say the stock price dips below my strike price, which would bring that put in the money, and now I would be long 100 shares of stock. Because if we just re review what a put contract is, it's the right to sell 100 shares of stock. So if I sell that right for someone else to sell their shares to me, if they exercise that option and I'm early exercised, I would then become long stock because they would sell their shares to me. So now if we take a look at the risk profile, my risk profile doesn't change because at expiration, that short put becomes long stock regardless if it's in the money. So my risk profile is still 100 shares at my break even price. However, now that I'm long shares, I don't have that additional leverage when it comes to that option itself. So let's say my buying power reduction increases. So for this example, we'll say that increase, it's going to increase to $2,500 which is pretty equivalent to what we were talking about with that example because normally in a margin account you get close to two to one on stock. So that sounds about right. So the big takeaway here is our risk profile doesn't really change as long as we're dealing with naked options like this. However, our buying power reduction will. So that's the big takeaway because if I'm trading options in a margin account and that's giving me tons of leverage, so I've got $300 of buying power reduction here, which is really just the cost associated with the trade entry and then I'm assigned and I am now long 100 shares and you can see my buying power reduction increases almost 10 times that amount. So it's really important to keep in mind and just be aware of certain situations where we might get assigned so that we definitely have the cash value available and if not we have the means to close that trade out right away. 
So let's go along to the next slide and we'll break this down even further. So when what there's one thing we can ask ourselves and that's what can I do? So if I'm assigned, what can I do? So we're gonna walk through a few examples here. So if we've got an undefined risk trade and let's stick with that same example. So let's say I sold a put. So I sold a put and it went in the money and for whatever reason the option owner decided to exercise their right to sell their shares, which means that I would have to buy that those shares shares from them. So basically I'm long shares now. So what can I do if that happens? Well, I can basically shell, sell my shares to close. So if I'm long those shares, I can just sell them to close the position. Now it's going to depend on whether I have enough capital to hold that position or not to determine whether the brokerage will get involved. If I don't have enough cash and my net lick becomes negative because I'm long those shares, then I'm gonna be in a margin call and they're gonna give me a call to let me know, hey, you've been assigned and now you're long these shares so you're gonna to have to close this position or add additional capital to bring your net lick above zero. So I can sell the shares to close the position if that's the case. Or if I sold a call, which is the right to buy 100 shares at a certain strike price, so if I sold that right to someone else and they decide to buy the shares, then that means I have to essentially sell the shares to them. So I would be negative 100 shares. I would have short stock in that position. So if I had short stock in that position, what I could do to close that position and be flat is simply buy the shares back to close. So if we look at some defined risk examples, let's say we've got a short put spread. So let's say I've got a short put spread here and the whole put spread goes in the money. So the short put would be exercised if they decided to exercise that early. So I would be assigned those long 100 shares of stock. So again, what I could do is sell the shares or if my long put is in the money, I could exercise that put. And that's where that defined risk aspect comes into play. So if the entire put spread is in the money, it makes more sense normally for me to exercise that put rather than sell the shares in the market to close it. On the flip side, if I've got a short call spread, so I sold a call closer to the money and bought a call further out of the money, I could do the same thing as undefined risk. So I could buy the shares to close, or if my entire call spread is in the money, again, I could exercise that call and it would give me that defined risk. So I keep talking about defined risk. On the next slide, we're gonna break it down and show you more visually how we can get out of that trade. So when we're talking about defined risk, there's one thing to consider that's very important and this is something that I didn't consider when I was new to trading. So this is something that I want to hit home for everyone. So let's say we're going back to that short put spread. So I sold a put at 95 and I bought a put at 85. So let's say when I did that, the stock price was at 100. So let's say it was right here. Now, if we get close to expiration and the stock price goes to 90, my short put would be in the money here, but my long put would not be. So this is an example of where sometimes it can become an undefined risk trade. So let's talk through what would happen if the option were to just expire in the money, not even talking about assignment. So let's say my short put is in the money, but my long put is not. If I held this through expiration, my short put would become 100 shares of stock at 95, but since my long put is out of the money still, it would basically disappear and expire worthless. So at this point, if this were to happen, I would be long 100 shares of stock and I would have this be exercised or it would basically expire worthless so it wouldn't really help me in any way. So it's really important to understand that if just my short put is in the money, it's going to act more like an undefined risk trade going through expiration. But if I'm assigned on that put, so I'm assigned at 95, so I've now got long 100 shares at 95, I don't have to exercise my long put because what I can do, if we think back to the previous slides, I can sell the shares at the market price. So instead of using this put and exercising it to sell my shares at 85, what I can do is just sell the shares at 90 in the market for a better price. So I wouldn't need to use that put. However, if the, if the stock price went all the way down to 80, then I can use that 85 put to sell those shares at a better price than the market.
Another thing to consider is dividend risk. So this was another whiteboard we covered, and really the dividend risk only applies to in the money short call options, and really we just need to be aware of the dividend being more than the extrinsic value of that in the money call. So for a further breakdown of that, check out the Mike and his whiteboard episode for dividend risk, and that gives a full breakdown, but basically what we need to know is, is the dividend greater than the extrinsic value of our in the money call, and is the X dividend date coming up? And one last thing is buying power. So on one of the first slides, we showed that our risk profile wouldn't change in the example of a naked put that we're selling, but our buying power reduction would change because there's a difference in buying power between long stock and a short option. So it's crucial to understand that and just make sure that we have enough capital in the account, which is why we always leave cash in the account in case these things happen. So let's go to the next slide and we will break it all off with some takeaways. So option owners have control over exercising options. So if I'm short an option, then I might be at assignment risk, but really it's only gonna be if I have an in the money option. There's really never gonna be a time where an option owner is going to look to exercise their out of the money option because whatever it is, if it's a long call that they have or a long put, they can do whatever they need to do at a better price in the market if that option is out of the money. So really, it's going to come down to being in the money and if we're short options, we'll be aware of that and we'll see if we're assigned or not. Secondly, assignment can happen at any time, but generally closer to expiration. So it really all boils down to the extrinsic value in the option. So this is the way I like to think of it. As we get closer to expiration, the extrinsic value is going to get lower and lower. So when someone exercises something, and if we're assigned with a short option, basically it can be, a, it can be exercised to intrinsic value. So basically if they have a long option that still has a lot of extrinsic value there, they're gonna be giving up that extrinsic value if they choose to exercise that option. So normally, when we're looking at early assignment, it's going to be with deep in the money options or options that are pretty close to expiration. That's generally when I've been assigned. And lastly, be aware of dividend risk, defined risk, and buying power effect. So with dividend risk, we need to be aware of the X dividend date, and we just need to make sure that the dividend is not more than the extrinsic value of our in the money call if we have one. And also with defined risk, if our stock price is straddling our two options, if our short option is just in the money and that goes through expiration, it'll basically turn into long stock or short stock. We don't have that, that defined risk aspect if our long option is out of the money. So it's super important to remember that. And lastly, buying power effect. So we've talked about it again and again, but it's really important to understand that while our risk profile may not change, our buying power definitely will if we go from a short put to long stock or a short call to short stock. So this has been an overview of assignment. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. My name is Mike. If you've got any questions at all, you can shoot us an email at support at doe.com, support at or you can tweet me at doetradermike. And we'll be back again tomorrow at 3.15 p.m. Central Time. So we'll see you then. Hey there, hope you like this video. Click below to watch more videos, subscribe to our channel, and check out tastytray.com for more great research and content.